Welcome back, y'all, to another installment of BHI Flies. We're going to be messing around with the articulated fly today. This is just the tail portion that we're going to begin with here. Uh, it's the firecracker that I have up on my Instagram, which is at bhi.flies. And you can see that one here. But if you haven't already, go over there and check out some of the uh, past patterns that I've done. And let me know what you think. I love uh, corresponding with people on there and hearing how they like to tie them, slash how they like to fish them. And let's uh, get started with this firecracker. If you've never messed around with an articulated fly, the best thing that you can do is tie your tail portion first because if you don't you'll quickly find that it's really tricky to make your wraps when you already have uh, the front portion connected so go ahead and start laying some some base wraps down and I'm going to try to stick to a warm color scheme the firecracker that I showed you there at the beginning is a black and orange pattern. I think we're going to go for maybe black, yellow, and orange today. I've got this really great piece of feather here that's got some of that red spattering on there. So I think that's going to match. Uh, make sure you, you line it up. Try to get your length. This is a 2 watt hook, so we might just take a little hair more off of the end of that one before we start laying it down make sure you've got whoops make sure you've got a good piece to start with so always compare it to the size of your hook there I'm liking how that's how that's looking so I'm gonna start getting some wraps on that and really just secure it down here at the front all this is going to soon be covered up with our feather. I'm going to start bringing in the other feather. So what I've got here is some very downy at the bottom black that we can lock down right where we have those wraps for the tail portion. Make sure you get the tail portion there really locked down. And as you can see, I hope you can see that anyway, this wants to spiral on its own. So use that tendency to spiral that it already has. And well, let's take this string just a little bit closer down there. And let it do that. Let it wrap itself around your thread and then it is very willing to make wraps and cover up all of that thread keep pulling it back so you get all those fibers to spread for you that at the end of the tip there. And I'm really liking how that looks. You could almost just have that as a as a fly in and of itself, but remember this is just going to be the tail portion. So let's just try to get some knots there at the end and lock everything in place so next we want to find the appropriate wire size for your articulated fly here and what I've got is some 18 gauge that passes with some room through this 2 aught hook um, 
uh, 18 gauge is around 25 pounds so if you're catching big fish like muskie on these it's going to be okay but i use stainless just because it's going to resist rusting and you'll get a lot more life out of this fly in the end so here we go let's start making this articulated shank so what i'm going to do is use some round nose pliers if you don't have round nose you could probably get away with just using some needle nose pliers um, these were handy they've got the little blades so you can make your cut and i've got around four inches of wire and what i want to do is about three quarters of an inch from the bottom make a bend in that and you can pretty much hairpin it all the way over because we're going to start to wrap this around itself once we pass it through the eye of the hook so here we are back to our fly again so take that piece that we just curled over and make sure that it passes freely through the hook where the round nose pliers help is you can use them as a place saver down here uh, right by the eye of the hook so that when you go to start wrapping this around with your other pair of pliers you don't end up leaving yourself hardly any room and limiting the movement of that back portion so really make sure that this is twisted on there firmly because you do not want that to come undone if you get a large fish and it's a good sign that you get some free jiggling like this out of that connection I see that it's a little bit crooked so I'm going to go back and just straighten that out and then we're ready to connect it to our front portion all right, so I'm going to begin by just going ahead and taking this tail portion that we just tied out of the vise and replace it with our front 2 watt hook. So let's get that one locked into place here. All right, so for connection here, we're basically going to do is have to space this and determine the perfect distance from the back hook and for me that amounts to where this hook at the rear is able to swing forward and I, I hate it when I have like a topwater bait or something that has double trebles on it where the manufacturer has not taken into mind the distance between those two hooks so you know half the time I'm sure you've had this happen your treble hook will swing forward and hook onto the front treble and then you've got a mess that you have to resolve before you can cast out again so what I want to do is make sure that there's no way for this hook to come forward far enough to to hook on itself so as you can see it's pretty close right there so I'm gonna move it back at least a quarter of an inch so that there's not that's not going to happen and we can look at it again and make sure that there's no way you can even uh, make it pull back a little bit further just to be safe so I'm gonna mark that and oh my I don't have my sharpie sitting right here but there is one close by so bear with me one second all right i'm gonna mark that and put a mark on the hook and on our articulated shank so we know exactly I had a marker cap in my mouth so we know exactly where to line it up even if you take it off here to get your bobbin ready to tie that so let's make sure that it is sitting in the right direction don't want the hook to be upside down although that could be advantageous to you, you know, two different directions to be able to hook that fish i like it to be sitting down so the bait writes itself in the water so we can still see that mark 
make sure that it is exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to lay down some base wraps below this before I go in and get that piece on there. And I still have not oiled my squeaky bobbin. Uh, this is the one that I made, so sorry about the noise. But been a little bit distracted. Had a death in the family and just about to have a baby. So I'm going to make sure that I don't go all the way back to cover my mark so that I can line that up exactly where I wanted it to be which if we look was right there so we'll put that down get some base wraps and don't be skimpy with the amount of wraps that you put here because this is going to be supporting that wire in the front here so what we'll do after we have secured it make sure that it's straight and it's and it's uh, orientation here and then I'm going to bend this wire back and if you need help from your pliers you can go uh, in and squish that bend down but just make sure that the wires that you're using have some oop, smooth flat surface on there you don't want to be using the pair of pliers that had uh, teeth on there because you're going to cut your thread and we don't want that to happen so that has gotten it down a little bit more flush and then I can start with my wraps and covering that up. I'm going to be pretty generous with the amount of wraps that I'm giving it here. And then I'm going to go over this quickly with a little bit of resin just to lock everything down. I want this to be I want this to be a strong connection. You do not want that wire coming loose. So let's just give that a little cure here and we will move on now to the next part which is getting our body built up here with some feather mass. Alright y'all, the resin is cured. We are going to start from the back portion and move forwards to get this tied. And the best way I've found to do that is to take the eye that you just made with that stainless wire and place it into your vise, just like you would with your hook, and then, or the shank of your hook, excuse me, and then lock that in. <laughs> Make sure it's nice and firm, and then we've got something to tie here. So, the reason that I called this the firecracker was because I posted it the day after 4th of July. I called it leftover firecracker, I think, on, on Instagram. But the picture that I showed you at the beginning, you can see that this back portion was home for a burst of color. So... How I started to do that was the same way that we did on the tail portion. We'll get some base wraps going and squeaky, 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 squeaky. Get started with that section. So I'll move towards the rear and I can start to get some of that black mass built up so 
same way. Got this spiraling section of black feather here. Now lock that into place and then move my thread back to where my feather is. Whoopsie, there's my resin on the floor. And start to wrap that around the thread itself. So what you can use this to do is cover that section where we wrapped up our wire and lock that into place and we don't have to worry about doing a knot right here because I'm gonna just bring the next section of feather into that just gotta find a little bit longer one than the one that I just pulled out okay it's a little bit better and just lock that base in and do the same thing. So we're just building up, building up mass here. Make sure to be pulling those fibers back so that you get the most. And you can actually bring this up past the, the hook itself. Now onto the, the higher part of the shank. So I'm going to let that sit for a second. So I've got a little bit of a space. And that is where I'm going to attach my firecracker component. So I've got to look back in my feather bin now and see what I've got to work with. Okay, so once we have some of our orange fibers ready to be integrated in there, I'm going to try to lay them on and... and don't just put them on the top. When you get that first wrap in, try to slide them on both sides around the hook. So you can see what's starting to happen, uh, or excuse me, on that piece of wire. Um, starting to make those spread out. Okay, just need to get a few more. All right, sorry y'all, I uh, had to help a neighbor who got the couch stuck in the stairway real quick. Um, just to show you what I'm, how I'm sourcing uh, these pieces for that firecracker part in the middle, I'm just taking the shears and taking these off right next to the quill itself. So as soon as you do that, you can stack them and start positioning them and tying them in so I've got another section and as I as I do this I try to like bring all of those fibers around don't just set them on top and then lay that wrap down and secure them so that's going to give it that that uh prickly burst in the middle so I've done two little batches I've got just a little bit left so I don't think I'm gonna leave that on my quill I'm just gonna cut it off and put one more so three little bunches of the individual orange feather fiber so try to get those relatively centered and then the harder you the harder you pull these wraps down the more it's going to fluff out and, and spike off in different directions so that's what I like to see if there's any loose ones you can um, go back in and try to trap those down as best you can but I'm going to put one more black feather up here on the front to build up some more mass. I'm taking this out of the vise at this point from attaching it to our articulated shank there. And I'm going to attach it to the front hook just so I've got some more support. 
And let's get a, another prime black feather here. attached to that front so I'm gonna leave a little section because on the last one I put some eyes on it so I want to leave some real estate up front there uh, where my thread wraps were so that I can put those eyes on but I just want to build up some more mass here at the front little end of the feather to cooperate with me here. Okay, I think I might need just one more. Just a little bit further back towards that firecracker portion. So lock that that bottom of the feather in. Wrap the rest of it around your thread. And then you can complete that so try and try and start migrating my thread back to the front here and at this point I want to conclude this so I'm going to take it back up to the eye and get a little whip there <sighs> all right and then we'll stick some more some more head cement up there uh, just to lock those in and get the eyeballs ready to attach to this monster you can see here what I've got going on uh, my vice is not too fancy, but I do have the ability to be able to roll my flies, and if you can do that, definitely makes the uh, application of the, the resin on the eyeballs here. I've just taken them right off the sheet, mashed up a size, and then now I'm going to add some resin and just do one side at a time. I just found that if I was trying to remain vertical and add the resin for my for my eyes, I just ended up having resin dripping all over the place and the eyeballs sliding down to the bottom and it got really frustrating so now whenever I do it I just go in and um, do one side at a time. So have your pin or toothpick or whatever it is that you have for arranging that resin handy I've just got like a little head pin and I like to start to manipulate it with that you can stop it from um, dripping off and just get this one locked into place and go back afterwards and give it a really good cure but just get that one tacked and then you can flip it over to the other side. Let's try to get the camera repositioned here. All right. So, just got to get one more eyeball. And that one placed. going to just move this back. It's nice to have <clears throat> multiple axes that you can move your flies so that you can make sure to get the proper position that's comfortable. Let's get it focused there. And also balanced because you, know, you might be able to get the fly. Whoops in the right orientation but then the resin starts to flow off in a different direction so keep that
keep that pin or toothpick handy what I've done I'll show you here in a second or you can see it actually right here is just keep a wine cork handy so that you can have those tools at the ready so make sure to get the cap on your resin before you turn the light on and you can really see those eyeballs are gonna have a dramatic effect in their presence in the water So after those are cured, we will get it upright again. So we can take a look at it. So as always, y'all, um, I'm going to put pictures of both of the leftover firecrackers here on my Instagram, which is at bhi.flies. And like I said, take a look at some of the other patterns that I've tied and get at me let me know what you think let me know if you've tried to tie any of these before and uh, it always helps to like and subscribe on the videos as well but until next time happy tying and uh i'll catch y'all in a bit